One thing must kill a man, yeah? I'm aware most of you know this stress. But again, most if not actually all of you know about the Ashanti Empire. So the Ashanti Empire was one of the empires that ruled over West Africa a long time ago. And before the rise of this empire, there was one great kingdom, a very iconic, so powerful, give it all the great names, yeah? Now this kingdom was so powerful that it controlled everything to do with gold. And you know what I mean, yeah? You know the value of gold. So that kingdom was everything, but with one legendary fight. Like I started, I say, one thing must kill a man. Now, with one legendary fight, this kingdom fell. And after the kingdom fell, of course, it led to the rise of other iconic powers in West Africa. Today, I'm going to tell you a very interesting story of the Dankira Empire, or kingdom, that fell actually at the hands of the Ashanti people, of the Ashanti Empire. So make sure you are staying tuned till the end of this story because it's going to be very mind-blowing. So let me take you back to the early 16th century. And during this time there was a small Akan kingdom called Agona. Now this was the kingdom that grew to the mighty Denkira kingdom. And how did they reach to such a point? Of course, they were the rulers or the controllers of the southwestern gold mines of Ghana, of course. And not only did they do this, but they also controlled the trade between the European powers such as the Dutch. Yeah? Now, that is what made them grow very powerful. And during their time at the height of their dominance, they were so powerful that they absorbed some of their neighbors such as the Asen, the Twifo, just to make them more dominance in the gold trade, yeah? But as I said earlier, one thing must kill a man. So the rulers of this tribe, of course, but of this empire, didn't see what was actually coming to hit them. And it was actually coming from an unlikely warrior. Was it one of them that betrayed them or what happened? Let's get deeper into this story. So who was our unlikely warrior? that the people of the Denkira kingdom didn't see coming. His name was Enta Osei Tutu. I'm so sure most of you are familiar with this name. So what happened with this guy? Mm, you know most of you are familiar with that name. Yeah? Why is this guy pantsing between, in, between my interview? Who is this guy? Anyway, Enta Osei Tutu, while at the age of 16, he had to go to a tribunal. Now this was a common thing at the Denkira kingdom. The king had to control the royal family. So at the age of 16, they would do some things, take the royal people to the tribunal and they be tried. So of course, Osei Tutu was not an exception and he was tried and guess what? He was found with a mistake. So he had two options, either run away or stay as a hostage. Of course, he chose to run away and went to seek refuge at a Kwam kingdom. It was, I think, a closer kingdom, yeah? Anyway, whatever happened, happened, and at the Akwam kingdom, that's where Osei Tutu learned things like war and leadership, yeah? Things that actually led to the fall of his people and his kingdom later, yeah? So, of course, time passed, years went by, and Osei Tutu actually had time and finally decided to go back home. Now, as he went home, he didn't just have one thing in mind. He didn't just go there for the throne. The other thing that he really wanted was, I am going to take down the whole of the Nigeria kingdom. He or Empire Yotel is going down. That's what was in his mind. Now, with these thoughts, of course, Osei Tutu rallied his close friend. Of course, he was a legendary priest. Most of you must have heard this, of this guy known as Okomfo Onekin. So after getting him, of course, they rallied the chiefs of the Akan states. They did everything, yeah? And after this, of course, 
they formed a very great alliance known as the Amanto Confederacy. This alliance, of course, had one thing in mind, overthrow the whole, and I mean the whole of the Nehira Empire. So this was going to be a very great fight, a very legendary fight, because, trust me, overthrowing the Nehira Empire was not an easy task. So what happened? So, as I say, the Denkira kingdom or empire was great. They had a great army, they had advanced weapons, yeah? But the Ashanti also, they were so clever. And of course, with Osei Tutu as their leader, they did a planned attack. It was like, uh, what should I say? It was an impromptu attack, it was an ambush, yeah? This happened in 1701. And to date, this battle is known as the Great Feyase Battle. I don't know whether you guys have heard of that battle. This was the battle between the Ashanti people and the Denkira Empire. And guess what? For once, the Denkira Empire was defeated. The Denkira army was defeated. Now, of course, their king was killed. His name was Ntimi Gankiari. He was killed and, like I said earlier, one thing must kill a man. Just with that one decisive battle, everything about the Denkira Empire came crumbling down. So the fall of the Denkira Empire and the rise of the Ashanti Empire is one of the most epic, one of the most incredible stories revolving around betrayal, leadership and war in the history of Africa. And of course, this only happens when it includes the chasing of power, you know, those fortunes that really need things that include war. And so one has to be very careful while at this part. For more information about this story and other great epic tales of great empire kingdoms in Africa, make sure you follow us at our website at africa.com. And if you enjoyed this story, let me know your views at the comment section. And don't forget to share, comment and subscribe. Thank you for your time. My name is Nokla Murunga and this is Africa Rebirth.